Three task managers that I've used a lot over the years are OmniFocus, Todoist, and Things3. How have these to-do apps developed recently and what can we expect from them in the future? Let's take a look and we'll start off with OmniFocus. Now, I did a video about OmniFocus quite a while ago talking about OmniFocus 4's development, what's going on with it and you know why it's taking so long. Not that I have any insight as to why it's taking so long. So if we look here at the Omni Group's blog, the Omni Group is the people who create OmniFocus. In May of 2021, which is about two and a half years ago at the time that I'm recording this video, they opened a public beta for Omni Focus 4, the next major version of OmniFocus for iPhone and iPad. Then well over a year after that, which is also well over a year ago from now, they opened uh, the beta version of OmniFocus 4 for the Mac. So I've done a video about OmniFocus 4 for the Mac in the past, but let's take a look at what it looks like right now. This is the current beta version of OmniFocus 4 on the Mac. It's definitely a lot more polished than previous versions that I've looked at. It definitely also looks better than OmniFocus 3, which makes sense because OmniFocus 3 is quite an old app right now. So you'd expect OmniFocus 4 to look a lot better. There are still some things that I find extremely confusing though. For example, if we look at my forecast view, here today, my forecast perspective and the today compartment of it. I'm showing some of my calendar events in addition to tasks. And what happens is all day events show up at the top. Then I've got tasks with deadlines. Then I've got a timed event. Then I've got tasks with the next tag, which I've set to be the tag that any tasks that get that tag show up under today. And I just find this a very confusing order to show things in. If I compare with things three, for example, which we're going to look more at later, things, things three just shows, hey, this is an all day event you got right here. Uh, this is a calendar event you got right here. And look at the minimal amount of space this, this takes up. And all of my other tasks are sorted really nice nicely with headings, etc. Whereas in OmniFocus, I, I just feel like I'm looking at a database table. It's much harder to read, not very intuitive. And I really feel like with at least two and a half years of development, but probably more because they probably were working on this before the public beta came out, they should have been able to come up with a better way of representing the stuff that you want to work on today. All right. And same thing kind of goes for the inspector over here, which I find a quite outdated way of doing things. And they've done a lot of work on being able to manipulate things in line, like setting the due date here, adding notes and you know, changing the tag and all that stuff, but still not as intuitive as it is in other apps. If we pop over for a second to the iPhone and we look at OmniFocus on iPhone, this is what it looks like right now. Definitely a lot better than OmniFocus 3 looks on iPhone. It's easier to use. So at the bottom, I can tap inbox, which my inbox is empty right now. I can tap projects, uh, forecast, and I can go to all these things, but there's some weird design decisions here as well. For example, if I tap the forecast perspective again at the bottom, then I get this calendar view. So if I tap it, I flip back. And if I go to projects and I tap it once, I see a sort of detailed view of my projects. But if I tap projects again twice, now I see this sort of outline view of my projects and it goes back and forth. And same thing is true with tags. And I just find this a confusing way to do things. <laughs> so in the review perspective, it's like this and it bounces back and forth between all of my projects that need reviewing and a single one that I'm reviewing. So just a strange design decision. Don't really understand why it is that way. Then if we go to the nearby perspective at the bottom right, if I tap that, there's some weird bugs in here. For example, you see the Apple Maps logo at the bottom left. It's kind of being hidden by that search button. And then at the top, you see that there's this weird background for nearby that just kind of looks weird and odd and seems like a UI bug fix that they really should have fixed by now. So just a lot of weird stuff going on. And it's been like at least two and a half years. You feel like basic bugs like this should no longer uh, exist after two and a half years. So I find that disappointing. And I also think that in those two and a half years, other things could have been added. For example, natural language input is something that an app like Todoist has. It's very useful. Once you start getting used to it, you really don't want to go without it anymore. Couldn't we have added that to OmniFocus in, what is it, um, 30 months or more? I mean. <laughs> That's a lot of development time. And just to show you a little bit, if I click help right here and I go to the release notes, this is a log of what's going on with OmniFocus 4 for the Mac uh, with the beta. You'll see that the last change was September 21. Now I'm recording this on October 27th. So it's already been well over a month since there actually have been any uh, published changes to OmniFocus 4 for the Mac. And the kind of changes that they're making is all like really small fixed compatibility issue, fix the crash, fix the crash. So there's just not that much going on. I know that they've also been working on making OmniFocus for work well for the latest version of Mac OS and iPhone and iOS and stuff, but that's table stakes, right? That's table stakes. All apps should be doing that all the time. And so if you look at this, there's not actually a whole lot going on. There was more going on over the summer, but a lot of this is just bug fixes. And and actually like so much have, has changed. And I also see often that they're changing something one way and they're changing it back. So it's just, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Uh, at some point they, I think said that they're hoping for OmniFocus 4 to be released this year in 2023. 
I'm not holding my breath. I'm really looking forward to seeing the final version of OmniFocus 4. And I also hope that development will accelerate after they finish that because there's some other features that OmniFocus really needs. I will say that OmniFocus still has a lot of things going for it. The built-in review perspective is absolutely fabulous. I love it. It's so useful for making sure that you do your weekly reviews, which is such a key productivity habit. There's location-based reminders. There is custom perspectives like the available perspective that I teach in my OmniFocus course. You can make projects, sequential projects, so that you're only working on one task at a time and the other tasks don't show up as available. There's really a lot of defer dates, still a lot of strengths to go off of, but I really wish that development was much faster. Next, let's talk about Todoist. The story is really the opposite of the story with OmniFocus. Todoist has been developing very fast. A lot of stuff is going on. So let me show you some of the things that have been going on. Well, first of all, the company Doist, which is the company that makes Todoist as well as some other products, is hiring new people. That's fantastic. It's a sign that things are happening, things are trending in the right direction, and that there's growth there. Really great. Amir, by the way, is the CEO of Doist, the company that makes Todoist. And one of the things that I really appreciate about the Doist team, about Amir, is that they are communicating so well with users and you know people like me people like you and explaining what they're doing with todoist for example here he recently posted a three minute video on his twitter account x account whatever <laughs> where he's um showing you behind the scenes how they're thinking about evolving todoist's design because todoist has a new design which i'll show you in a minute explaining that they think very carefully about whether something should look this way or that way and really appreciate them doing that but in addition to that he also likes to showcase new features that are either just released or coming. It's just a great way to keep people involved and you can tell that they really listen to feedback from their community, which is absolutely amazing. So what's been happening in Todoist lately? Uh, Todoist looks like this these days. And if I click here, I can turn off the new layout beta and then you'll see that Todoist used to look like this, which was fine, but the new layout definitely looks a lot sharper. Yeah, a lot cleaner. It's really easy to find things. It's very calm. If OmniFocus looks very busy, Todoist just looks calm and gives me a really nice overview of all the things that I wanna to do today. So what are some of the new features in addition to the design? If you hit Command K, you get this really nice panel where you can do kind of a quick search, quick open. There are now durations for tasks. So for example, record a role. This is scheduled for today, but what time is it right now? So 12, so let's say 12.30 to 1.30 is how long I'm gonna take on this. So what I can do is click into this task and open the date and actually say today. But in addition to that, I can set the time uh, from 12.30 and say duration one hour and then save. And now what this does is you'll see that this task, it gets its own entry in today, which is not super intuitive, that's unfortunate, but it shows you that today from 12.30 to 1.30, I'm gonna work on this. And if you've got Todoist linked up with your calendar, this task will also show up on your calendar from 12.30 to 1.30. Amazing, great for time blocking. Task durations is a wonderful feature. It's also the foundation for another feature, start dates, which is gonna come to Todoist at some point. They've semi-officially confirmed this. It just probably will take a while. I'm really glad to see that. Now, some other cool things that they've done is they have an AI assisted uh, filter uh, generator. So the way that that works is if you add a new filter right here, it's called filter assist and click try it. And you can basically say to the AI, I wanna see all my non-recurring tasks in the inbox, or I wanna see all my tasks due next week. So let's, let's try that one, all tasks due next week. And then what it will do is the AI will create the query that you need to create that particular filter. It created it right now, add filter. Now I have a new filter that shows me next week's tasks. Isn't that lovely? I think it's absolutely fanta fantastic. I was gonna say fantabulous, not a word. Um, this is the sort of thing that I expect to see from a company and a product that are dynamically developing. You know what I'm saying? So for example, OmniFocus has so much power with it, with its custom perspectives. For many people, they're kind of difficult to set up because you have to do lots of rules if this and this is true, that or and blah, blah. It gets confusing and it's so much easier to just use natural language and use a new technology, generative AI in this case, or maybe it's not generative, whatever, AI to, uh, create that filter for you and just make it more user-friendly. Love that Todoist has been doing this. Now, some other things that are new in Todoist is multitask drag and drop. So that's really nice. So what I could do is I can just grab multiple tasks right here and actually just take all of them and chuck them into a certain project. That's a nice quality of life improvement that it didn't used to be uh, possible. It just was just harder to begin with. They created this new feature. They 
publicly announced it and they're iterating very fast. Now, another thing that's going on here, of course, is Todoist has a free version, but the premium version is really where you get all the features and there's a subscription model going on. Now, I know that a lot of people really dislike software that you have to pay for on a subscription basis. Personally, I'd like paying for subscription software as opposed to one off. For example, Things 3 is an app that you pay one off and then you can just keep using it. I like the subscription model because what you see with Todoist is development is really fast because there is this subscription model. There's no incentive for them to wait for a new version of Todoist that all of a sudden is going to introduce like 12 new big features because otherwise you won't upgrade. Otherwise you won't pay for the next version. No, because you're constantly paying them a little bit each month or maybe you're paying per year, they can get new features out when they're ready and much more quickly, okay? Another thing that's coming to Todoist is they're going to be revamping the way that you collaborate with other people in Todoist. There's gonna to be this thing called Workspaces. Can't show you that yet right now, but that's going to be really useful. And they're going to have a built-in calendar, which I've already seen and have tested. And I think it's gonna be really handy, especially for those of you who like time blocking. So lots of stuff going on with Todoist. Absolutely love their development direction. Just hope that they're going to start working on those start dates sooner rather than later. And that brings us to Things 3, the third to-do list app that I mentioned. What's been going on with it? Well, first of all, Cultured Code, the company behind Things, is also hiring. They are looking for a cloud platform engineer. And it says this person will be responsible for the Things Cloud. That's their synchronization engine, availability, scalability, etc. And this person will play a key role in the development of some exciting and challenging new features. So that sounds nice. That sounds fun. That sounds exciting. But before we talk about that, what's been going on with Things recently? Well, Things was featured in the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference in the uh, State of the Union, or was it platform? state of the union thing so that's really cool you can tell that apple knows that things is one of the best apps one of the most well-designed apps available for the apple platform so that's really lovely anyway what's actually new in things well first of all things now has interactive widgets and so i actually show you that on iphone if i have done something for example if i've done my strength training for today i can just go ahead and check that off on the widget and that was an interactive widget that uh, worked right away right here from the home screen this is keeping up with the latest ios and the latest mac OS because there's also now Mac OS widgets that you can put on your desktop and those are interactive as well. That's table stakes though, right? So I said that earlier when I talked about OmniFocus, making sure that your app supports the latest features of the operating system, that's table stakes. So what else is new? The main other thing that things recently got is adjustable text sizing. Now this is actually huge. And I know that this was a really big effort for the things team for the cultured code team on the back end as well. So we want to make sure that we celebrate this a little bit. If I go into the things settings, and under general, I can now change the text size so I can make the text in things way bigger. And for people who have not amazing sight or who have a, a ridiculously sized monitor, if you're one of those people, this is actually a godsend. It is so handy because now you don't have to squint so much easier to use things it had been one of the biggest drawbacks of Things 3 for a long time. So I'm so glad that they finally did that. It's not really a feature that you advertise to potential new, you know, customers, but big, big, big quality of life improvement for those of us who really enjoy using Things 3. Other than that, not that much has been going on recently. So people often ask me, Peter, when is Things 4 coming out? Well, first of all, I actually don't know if there is going to be a Things 4. And if there is, I have no idea when it's going to come out. I have not any more insight into this than you do. However, looking back at that Twitter, there will be some exciting and challenging new features. I don't know. It's really hard to say. The, the people at Culture Code are pretty private about what's going on. Big contrast there with the, the team at Doist. The Doist people are really public. We're working on this. This is coming. Things people are just like, quiet, quiet, quiet. Boom, there's a new feature. So of course, I'm hoping for there to be a Things 4 pretty soon and I hope it will include support for attachments. That's a big missing feature. Frustrating, to be honest. I wanna be able to attach PDFs, images, voice notes, whatever, all that kind of stuff to my to-dos and have that sync between the different platforms. Probably a difficult thing to implement well, I suspect that's actually why it's taken them a long time. But I want that because that is an important feature that needs to exist in a to-do app. Collaboration would be absolutely fantastic, allowing me to share tasks within things or uh, assign them to other people who are also using things, you know, people maybe in my family or people I'm working with. And another big thing that's missing from Things 3 is location-based reminders. That's something that I would love to see, feel like it should be doable. So right now you can set a reminder on a to-do for remind me at 5 p.m. today, but you can't say remind me when I arrive at the grocery grocery store to do this or remind me when I arrive at work to talk to that person. That's an important thing. OmniFocus has had it for a long time. Todoist has had it for a long time. I think it's time that things create that as well. So that's what's going on with these three apps. If any of these three apps 
is really appealing to you, or perhaps you've used one of them, but you're interested in one of the other ones, I have full length courses on each of these three apps that teach you all the in and outs of the app, but also teach you an entire workflow for being more organized and more productive. I also have free cheat sheets for these apps. All of that information is in the description of the video. And I'll also tell you right now that I've got a course coming up on Apple Reminders, the Reminders app that comes with your iPhone, iPad, Mac, etc. The Reminders app is a bit simpler than these apps, but can still be really powerful if you know how to use it. So I've got a course coming up on that one, finished recording it, just need to edit it and get it out there. It's coming in the next few weeks. Finally, another announcement, I am running my live course, Organize Your Life. Again, this is a four week group course, really fun. We're gonna have a couple dozen people and me getting together a couple times a week to organize our lives, to clarify our goals, translate our goals into action steps, Super amazing, would love to see you there. I'll make sure that the link to that course is also in the description of the video and you can go ahead and find that on my website. Thanks for watching, have a great day, ciao.